Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I rise to make my contribution to Budget 2020, first of all, I wish to say thanks to God Almighty, the Great Spirit, for giving me this opportunity, health and strength, to be here in this honorable house. I also wish to say thanks to the Guyanese people who put their support with the People's Progressive Party Civic to ensure that we are in government once more so that we can bring our plan for prosperity, real prosperity. Mr. Speaker, I wish to take this opportunity also to say congratulations to you on your ascension of office as the Speaker of the House. May God give you the courage, health, strength, patience, Mr. Speaker, to execute your duty in a very good way. I also wish to say congratulations to, Mr. to the Honorable Lennox Odell Schumann, who has the courage to accept the position of Deputy Speaker. Congratulations, my son. In our indigenous language, I say, Pachinachi Salaro Bele Kono Lukuchi, meaning God bless you and preserve you and keep you, my Arawak son. May God keep you and give you the courage to stand up as a great chief, as our ancestors walked before us. Mr. Speaker, history has been created in this house on September 1st. Amerindians throughout the length and breadth of Guyana feel proud and happy when they learn that Mr. Shimon, the honorable member, is now the deputy speaker. It is for the first time in the history of our country that an Amerindian son will stand in this house proudly as Deputy Speaker. However, Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker, colleagues, comrades, honorable member on the other side of the house did not see fit words like it is an abomination came from honorable member across the house publicly on social media which is an insult to the Amerindian peoples of this country. And yet, honorable members are standing up here now and pretend that they love us so much. Then it is an abomination for an Amerindian person to be the deputy speaker of this honorable house. Mr. Speaker, I must say, we cannot change history and we will continue to make changes. And this change happened under the People's Progressive Party Civic because we supported him so that he can be our Deputy Speaker. History. 10th of September 1957. That's why we are celebrating Amerindian Heritage Month. The late Stephen Campbell took the oath of office. Today, we are all proud of him. We are still proud of his legacy. And talking about le legacy, yes, he left legacy that we are all proud of. Mr. Speaker, that being said, we talk about unity and love and all these things. But as Amerindians, after March 2nd, we have faced many derogative words, things that thrown on us. And so while the honorable member on the other side of the house is calling for unity, I am also saying, yes, we must have unity. And yes, call on your supporters to give us due respect in this house 
on the street and throughout Guyana. We are the first peoples of this country. And therefore, it must not be said, break down the bridges, go back to your bush, and all sorts of things that I wouldn't like to say in this house. Honorable Mr. Speaker, let me move on to budget 2020. Sitting here in the past two days, Mr. Speaker, I've heard so many things, so many words describing budget 2020. Budget 2020 is being brought to this honorable house our plans for prosperity. Budget 2020 has been described by the other side of the house as budget to hoodwink the nation, backward budget, and the new word I heard yesterday from the honorable member Sheriff Duncan. Budget. I want to know, Mr. Speaker, this is the new word. What do we, I'm trying to look where I can find the meaning of that word. So, we've heard all sorts of things about this budget. But, Mr. Speaker, I wish to say that budget 2020 is an emergency budget. Budget 2020 should have been in this house before now. If everything went well, and if members on the other side of the house, or let me say, if the APNU AFC had respected the rule of law, we would have been here before. We would have been here before and presented maybe a better budget. I also wish to remind the honorable members on the other side of the house that the APNU plus AFC spent more than half of budget 2020 and, yes, I would like you to hear, because I think some people don't have good hearing. <laughs> you spent more than half of the budget. And so, and so, now you're calling the budget all sorts of things. But you, unauthorized, illegal, spent the money. And here we are now, we have to perform miracle to meet all the demands that is now being made. Budget, this is budget 2020. We are in September. We just have a few more months. Honorable members, I would like you to look out for budget 2021. That would not be an emergency budget. That would not be an emergency budget. And I do hope that budget you will have the opportunity to spend or shortchange us on this side of the house. Mr. Speaker, let me go to budget presentation. I would like to say what was said. I would like to say that thanks to the Honorable Juan Agil, to the team from the Ministry of Finance, the former President Barajagdio, Champion of the Earth. And all those, and all those who work diligently in the preparation of budget 
2020, an emergency budget, a budget that the APNU, AFC, already spent half of the money. I would also like to say our plans for prosperity will move forward under the leadership, under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali and retired Brigadier Mark Phillips. We will move forward also with our team sitting on this side of the house. Mr. Speaker, I would like to focus more on the section that deals with Amerindians. Because that's what we're here for. And I listened to the young member that presented a little before me. And yes, he made some very good points. Yes. But I wish to remind him that things like school feeding program, that was their hot meal, that was there before. And as a government, you meet something you're supposed to build on it, extend it further. And so, sir, we will not forget about it. We will try to do better. And we will do better. You spoke about education, equitable sharing of education. Let me remind you, sir, let re me remind this honorable house, and I'm happy that we have a young doctor sitting among us here, Dr. Tandita Smith. And we have many more across this country who benefited from program, educational programs, scholarships, under the People's Progressive Party system. And it will continue, sir. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It will continue and we will do better. We will do better. Because that is our aim. The People's Progressive Party Civic is a government for everyone. And the Armenian peoples is a very important part of this population. And that's why I want to say that's why we are sitting on this side of the house. My colleague. We are here. And I appreciate you raising those things. Yes. I would like to say to you, sir, road networks, it didn't start on the Apno. It started a long time. Under the People's Progressive Party Civic, it started. All these things. I am not saying that the road was the best under the PP, but it started. And you know many things, I'm talking about pictures, I can bring pictures too. Because I would like to say to the Honorable Patterson, the Lima Sands Road, go and see it. The Lima Sands Road that is touted is so good, go and see it. I didn't know I was in court or else I, I would have brought my evidence. Okay? Yes. So, no, that is not correct, sir. That is not correct, sir. It is not correct. Anyway, let me continue, so Honorable Member Cox, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We will continue. And this is what we are all about. A government that is caring for not only Amerindians, but for all Guyanese. Now, the budget. Budget 2020. I've heard so many things that is not happening. As I said before, we cannot perform miracle now. No. What has happened? We have heard Honorable Minister spoke about the CSOs. We all know what happened. We all know who carried the story and how they want it. But Mr. Speaker, I would like to say the Hayes Project, 
that replace the CSOs, it is or it was a failure. Total failure. Mr. Speaker, October 2019, I sat in this very building in this room. I sat right there. And I listened to the presentation of the then Minister Valerie Garrido Lowe, who is unfortunately not here. Now, what did she say? She cut figures over four billion dollars that was spent on the project. She quoted how many persons were trained and what disturbed me most is how many successful small business were established under that project. Mr. Speaker, the, the then minister says 2,054 successful small business under the Hayes project. Mr. Speaker, I traveled the length and breadth of Guyana, every region. Honorable Member, Honorable Member, for us to travel along with you in the speech, you'd have to get an extension to conclude. Speaker, I'd like to ask for five minutes more for my honorable colleague to be able to conclude her presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Member, you may continue to the conclusion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What I'm saying, I have not, I have not been able to identify 54 successful small business under the Hayes project. Yes, uh, including Region 9, where I, where I ask questions. Secondly, sir, Mr. Speaker, shut your mouth. Mr. Speaker, I would like to turn my attention to land, which will be addressed in Budget 2020. Land. Mr. Speaker, when we demit office, the sum of 10.7 million U.S. dollars were left there. Mr. Speaker, on the 31st day of May 2018, the then Minister Ali Kopp admitted to the media that he was unable to title even one village. Yet, Mr. Speaker, I've heard in this very house here that we must take a page out of Mr. Ali Kopp's book. But honorable, honorable members, I don't think I want a page or any of us should take a page out of Mr. Ali Kopp's book. First of all, let it be known, honorable member Henry, that Mr. Ali Kopp sat in this parliament and he had the voting rights. So he can say he didn't vote for that. He hadn't the voting right. And he failed. And I want to miss, I want to remind the honorable member for Region 2 who mentioned in his first in the first day. And I also want to bring this to the honorable member Henry attention. He mentioned the manifesto. This is the 2015 APNU AFC manifesto. And they have failed to deliver. Failed to deliver from their manifesto. Page. Sir. Page 32. Speaks about indigenous peoples. And under the guidance of Mr. Ali Cook and Ms. Marino Law, they have failed to deliver, and yet we are hearing we must take a page. No way we do not want, and we will not take a page. But under Budget 2020, yes, land demarcation, land titling is back on you. And we will deliver. We will deliver. <laughs> Yeah. 
Mr. Speaker, yes, deliver for Men's Day. I'm thank I must say I'm thankful. The work for Men's Day was already done. And the work for many villages was, is completed. And I would like to say what stop or what hinder or what hold back the hands of the APNU AFC government from delivery. Mr. Speaker, let me say, much is a problem. September 2019, a publication says eight villages would receive their title soon. As I read that article and I number the villages, I only come up with seven villages listed, but the headlines say eight. And I would like to ask now, could any member on the other side of the house tell me how many titles were handed out at the last two shows conference? And those titles, we did the work, and to my knowledge, five. Publish eight, name seven, and hand five. Mr. Speaker, this is what we're dealing with. Mr. Speaker, we did the work just to hand it out. It took five years. And still, you cannot deliver all that we left. Mr. Speaker, I would like to say that I've heard several times in various presentations from honorable members on that side of the house that this is a private sector budget. May I remind the honorable members, private sector employs people. So if the private sector does not provide employment, and I why I'm saying this particular, this budget cater for forestry, mining, and Agriculture, reduction of VAT, removal of VAT. Yes, I must say, it, Mr. Speaker, because the Amerindian peoples, we are involved in mining, we are involved in forestry, we are involved in agriculture. And so, we will not only benefit from the cash grant and from others that is mentioned here from the land titling from education, but we will also benefit from employment from the private sector. And let me say, even some of us, Amer Indians, are our own mine, mining, we have our own operation, so we will benefit. So what is wrong with this budget? What is wrong with this budget? Thank you very much. I would like to say in response, the AP and you failed, so they got F. And that is why they're sitting on that side of the house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.